Not used to a table in front of me. Kind of like it. Guys, this is the first intro in my new studio. I'm kind of excited. In my last video, I briefly mentioned my husband and I bought a house, hence the new studio, and things around my house are slowly but surely starting to take shape. And one of my favorite things to get for every room are pillows. But one thing I hate about accent pillows, I cannot be the only one. I'm walking in a store and I see a pillow and I do that double take thing and I'm like, I need that pillow. I walk over to it, look at the price tag and it's $80 for one pillow. One time I even picked up a $150 pillow. <sighs> Having expensive taste is both a blessing and a curse. So this got me thinking, I have so many pillows that I don't know what to do with because one, they no longer fit the color scheme I am going for, or if they do fit the color scheme, they are kind of old and need to be updated. So I went online, did some research, got some fabric, and I am going to be trying to recreate some higher-end looking pillow covers for the pillows I already have. So without further ado, let's get started up glowing some pillows. Okay, first up on the glow up list is this lovely orange pillow. But this is actually a basic pillow cover I made last year to cover up this. <coughs> yup, this lovely black and white cat pillow. Okay, to be fair, this cat pillow had its moment. It lived its best life in my college dorm room, but now I'm married with a house, so I have to be more sophisticated. Okay, I have to pretend I'm more sophisticated. So the cat pillow has to go bye bye To start off this first pillow cover, I used the orange pillow cover I made as a template. And then after cutting out that piece, I got to work cutting up a bunch of 2 inch wide strips. Okay, let's go back to this cat pillow because I'm still a little stuck on it. And the reason I'm a little stuck on it is because the pillow was a gift and this got me thinking. Most of my friends and family know I have a deep love of cats and so roughly every year around Christmas or my birthday, I know for certain I am going to get a cat related present. Whether it's a mug, some socks, a picture, and I was wondering, Am I the only one that goes through this? Okay, so that was just a giant tangent. Let's get back to what I am doing. After I cut out a ton of those two inch strips, I sewed along the edge of all those strips on each side. When I was doing my research, something I realized about really expensive pillows is that there is usually a woven aspect to them. And a lot of the pillows I like usually have a tone-on-tone -tone woven look. So using those two-inch strips, I was able to create a really cool tone-on-tone -tone design. The reason I sewed along the edges of each piece is to stop the edges from fraying past where I sewed. And I still wanted to leave the raw edge instead of doing a rolled hem because it gives it a deconstructed look. <gasps> After I had all the strips woven and sewn down around the perimeter, this kept happening. So to stop all of the bunching from happening and keep everything in place, I sewed a bunch of diagonal lines through the middle of the piece. And now the rest of the pillowcase was super easy to finish up. I cut a second piece for the back, sewed up the three sides, notched the corners before flipping them inside out. And if you haven't seen any of my previous sewing videos, notching the corner is just removing the fabric in the corner. So when you flip whatever piece you're working on inside out, there isn't a ton of extra fabric, making the corners bulky. Then to finish it up, I sewed in a zipper, and now the time has come 
to say goodbye to these kitty cats. And hello to a brand new beautiful woven pillow. Okay, up next on the chopping block, we have this lovely shag pillow. Over the years, this pillow has slowly gotten more and more stretched out. And this is also a cover like the first pillow, covering up an even older pillow. And underneath all that shag is this lovely lady. Okay, if I'm being honest, I think this was one of the first pillows I ever made. I used an old cross-stitch pattern that I got from my great-grandmother for the front. So this fabric is either from the 20s or 30s, not totally sure. But I definitely can't get rid of the pillow for sentimental reasons, but I can create a new cover for it so that this little lady is safe. After measuring the pillow, I got to work cutting out the front piece. Now it's time to bring in my big old basket of yarn. I have way too much yarn and I am always looking for ways to use it. I don't knit, I don't crochet, and I only from time to time weave. And since more expensive pillows always have a woven aspect, I figured this was the perfect opportunity to use some yarn. After cutting and spacing out the yarn evenly using a zigzag stitch, I stitched each piece using white thread. And the reason I used white thread is because I wanted the zigzag stitch to stand out over the gray yarn. And I didn't by any means try to make these zigzags perfect. Something I noticed about expensive pillows, or at least the expensive pillows I like, is there is definitely a handmade feeling to them, which makes the price make sense. So I thought by doing some imperfect zigzags, it would give it a handmade look. Then it was another easy finish to the rest of this cover. I cut out a back, sewed up the sides, sewed in a zipper, all that. But something I realized, if you would like to see how to sew in a zipper and maybe a few other sewing things that are good to know how to do, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to put together a little bonus video of different sewing things, like a zipper, a buttonhole, making a tiny top hat, you know, just really simple things. And now it's time to put this little lady in her new home. Oh, doesn't she look so cozy in there? Okay, get out of here. Third on the list is another gray pillow that is a product of my dorm room. If you can't tell, I have a hard time throwing out pillows. They just hold such a special place in my heart. For this pillow cover, let's jump ahead past the boring part. I made a basic pillow cover. Now let's bring in that basket of yarn again, and I want you. Taking this yarn, I began to make tassels by wrapping this yarn around my hand over and over and over again. I think I wrapped it around my hand around 30 times. Then slipping that off my hand while keeping the shape, I took another piece of yarn and put it through the center and tied it up. And taking yet another piece of yarn, I tied that around the little yarn cluster cut off the excess pieces, and then cut open the yarn at the bottom. And boom, I had a tassel. Now to test if this was a good tassel, I found my nearest kitten to see if she would play with it, and she did, so it was a good tassel. Okay, you're probably wondering, who was that little fluff ball? Who was that little sweet baby angel? You know how I said every year for my birthday and Christmas, I get a cat-related item? Well, this year I got my standard cat mug, I got some cat socks, and I got a cat. Her name is Bonnie, and she decided to be a very big helper for this pillowcase, playing with all of the tassels. She played so much, she got tuckered out and fell asleep. Have you ever tried to work on a pillowcase while a cat is asleep on it? It is a very hard task. So what I had to do very gently so that Bonnie would not wake up, is seam rip open the pillowcase just enough to insert the tassel and then pin it in place. Once I had all the tassels pinned in place, I of course had to wait for Bonnie to get up because I cannot move my cat while she is sleeping. That goes against everything I believe. 
Then came the even better task of sewing while Bonnie attacked the needle that was moving up and down. I kept putting her on the ground, getting her away from the sewing machine, and she kept making her way back up to help me. Isn't she so thoughtful? Once that impossible task was over, this pillowcase was done. This was super easy and took no time at all to make. This also got me thinking if you aren't the best sewer, you could always take an existing pillow or pillowcase that you have and add these fun tassels. You don't even need a sewing machine. You can either hand sew or use some liquid stitch and then you got a jazzed up pillow. Let's move on to our fourth and final pillow glow up. This orange pillow, although isn't actually that old, I just cannot make the orange work in any of the rooms in my house, so she's gotta get a cover. And like the last pillow, I made a basic pillowcase. And this fourth pillowcase was another super quick and easy pillowcase. Also, another option like the last one, buy a plain pillowcase or use an existing pillowcase you already have and add this fun little detail to it. But I do recommend learning how to sew because it's super dope to know how to make things. You can take a wad of fabric and turn it into whatever you want it to be. Also, sewing's really practical because if you have some clothes that need repairs, you can repair them. But my personal favorite is just taking a wad of fabric, making something, and I really like to paint on the stuff I make because it's already art because you made it but then when you paint on it, it's like double art. I originally was going to stop here, but the more I looked at this pillowcase, the more incomplete it looked to me. So I added some tassels to the corner and that definitely gave it a more finished look, completing this last pillow cover. Okay, I'm slightly obsessed with how each one of these turned out, and no, not just because I gave my pillows new life and I didn't have to throw them away or get rid of them. I love the look of each one of them, and I think I achieved a pretty high-end look. I realized I didn't get to show you all of these pillow covers that I made. I made so many that I had to choose my favorite or else this video would have been super duper long. So if you would like to see a quick bonus video of how I made these pillows, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you liked this video guys, I had so much fun giving these old pillows a new and better life. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already, subscribe to my channel. I, from now on, am going to be putting up a video every week with all kinds of fun DIYs. And for the foreseeable future, there will be a ton of home decor DIYs. So hit that notification button so that you know when I post. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.